Here at eFix, we've noticed something that really shows how fast EV adoption is accelerating. When we moved in back in 2020, we installed a single charge point just for me. Not because I'm special, but because nobody else had an EV and it seemed perfectly reasonable to have my own little charging spot. A sort of personal socket tucked away quietly doing its job. And back then, that was enough. One charger, one car, no drama. But now, visitors are turning up in electric vehicles like it's some sort of silent ambush. They pile out waving charging cables and ask, can I plug in? With the same desperate optimism as a Victorian child asking for more gruel. Sure, we could send them into town to fight with tourists for the last working public charger, circling it like buzzards around a flat battery, but that would cost us valuable filming time. And frankly, we're not doing that. So we decided the sensible thing was to install more chargers, preferably ones that wouldn't turn the workshop into a giant electrical spaghetti monster. Now, to provide these extra extra chargers, we face the same dilemmas every workplace or commercial building owner runs into. How many chargers do we actually need? What charging speed should we offer? And how on earth do we bill people for using them? Thankfully, all of those concerns are neatly mopped up by using the Easy Charge Pro system, with the added advantage that it's incredibly easy to install and helps keep the installation costs down. Is it just me or does that look like a badger? Now we'll find out why it does later in the video. But before we show you just how easy it all is, let's explore a few EV charging myths. For most workplace and commercial installations, the limiting factor on how much charging power is available is the size of the incoming supply, and then how much of that supply the building itself needs to actually run. Of course, that demand changes throughout the day, the week, and even the year, but upgrading the supply is usually a major undertaking and eye-wateringly expensive, so in most cases, you simply have to work with what you've got. And that incoming supply essentially sets the maximum power available for EV charging. You'll also hear plenty of talk about AC chargers supporting up to 22 kilowatts. And while that sounds impressive, here's the reality. And it's a mistake a lot of people make. The AC charging electronics aren't in the charger at all. They're inside the car. And because public rapid DC charging has grown so quickly, most manufacturers have stopped fitting large onboard AC chargers. So what you typically see these days is 7 kilowatts on single phase and 11 kilowatts on three phase. In other words, even if you install a 22 kilowatt AC charger, most cars simply can't use it. And the final myth is that every EV driver turns up in the same situation. They don't. Not every car arrives with an empty battery and they don't all need to leave with a full one. So what we're really trying to do is offer the best charging experience based on the power we've actually got. The biggest factor in all of this is dwell time. How long the visitor is staying. In our case, guests are often here for an afternoon and sometimes well into the evening when we're live streaming. That typically gives us around eight hours of charge time, which is more than enough to top up most vehicles without needing huge amounts of power. And this is a similar scenario for offices, hotels, and pretty much anywhere people leave their cars for long periods. In those situations, the most important factor often isn't the raw charging speed. It's the number of sockets available. The more cars that can plug in at once, the better the overall experience. Nobody wants to play musical parking spaces or keep checking to see when it's their turn. They just want to plug in, get on with their day, and come back to a car that's topped up. And this is where traditional charging systems start to show their age. In a conventional setup, each charger is wired on its own circuit, which means running a separate cable all the way back to a distribution board for every single unit. That's a lot of cables, a lot of containment, a lot of switch gear, and then you still need a system to make sure you're you're not overloading the supply. All these extras add up. Easy estimates that their approach can reduce installation time by up to 75% with around a 45% reduction in overall project cost. With the Easy system, it's a completely different approach. You only need one circuit and that single supply can power up to 101 chargers. The clever bit is that all the chargers talk to each other constantly to ensure the circuit isn't overloaded. They simply share the available power between them automatically based on demand and priority. So let's take a closer look at how that works in practice with Rick. Here's our Easy Pro installation. We'll start here with the chargers. One of the first things you'll notice is that the Easy Charge Pro is a very compact device. It doesn't stick out far from the wall, which is ideal for our car park where space is a bit tight. The Easy units come in two parts, the base, which contains all the wiring and terminations, and the charger itself, or what Easy calls the charge bury, which simply clicks into place when you're 
ready to power up because the charge electronics are fully sealed inside the charge berry and the terminals are protected when the two parts mate together you don't need to be quite as concerned about the IP rating of the base plate we've installed two chargers and I've run the supply cable down the wall and tucked it neatly under the building skirt before bringing it into this junction box if I'd used the top entry option on the bases I could have looped in and out of each charger directly from the junction box I've run a six millimeter squared three phase and neutral cable back to our distribution board routed neatly along an existing cable tray at the board we've added a matty pen fault protection device this unit has five poles disconnecting all live conductors and the protective conductor if a pen fault is detected on the incoming supply we've fitted it into the expansion box on our schneider isobar board which saves a lot of space compared to using a fully boxed mat e device and importantly this version is now fully compliant with the iet 01 standard from the pen fault device we then drop down into a four pole mcb we don't need any additional rcd protection because the charge berries already include both ac and dcrcd functionality with the two chargers we've installed we can deliver up to around 176 kilowatt hours of charging over an eight hour period that's more than enough to fully charge two cars from empty which is ideal for our typical visitor dwell time using this setup it's also very straightforward to expand the system in the future we can add more chargers onto the same circuit or we can install extra bases now and only fit the charge berries later as demand grows the wiring approach is flexible as well you can daisy chain between chargers, run a star configuration or even use more innovative methods such as flat bus bar cable which we explored the last time we reviewed the Easy Charger. That was quite a few years ago and while this new Easy unit may look very similar at first glance there are some subtle but important updates. The first is the pair of clear panels on the front cover. These let you see the readings on the built-in MID class electricity meter which is essential in markets where users need accurate billing for the energy they consume. Inside the electronics have also been upgraded to support ISO 15118. That enables features like plug and charge where the charger recognises the vehicle and starts charging automatically without the need for an app. And ISO 15118 also supports the future move toward bi-directional charging vehicle to grid as that market begins to open up. All this technology sounds like it could be complex to set up but commissioning the chargers is actually really simple. Back to Rick. The chargers are set up using the Easy Installer app. Once you've created a site for the installation, you simply tell the app about the key details, the main supply fuse and the circuit fuse. Each base has an RFID tag which you read using either Bluetooth or NFC, as I've done here, that automatically assigns all the bases to the circuit. You can also give each base a name, which is really useful for future maintenance teams when they need to identify the exact location of a unit. Then it's time to power up, click in the charge berries and pair each one to its respective base using the QR code or Bluetooth. Enter the pin number and that's the commissioning done, ready to hand over to the customer. I'm really pleased how Rick has gone about this installation. You can't really get easier for mass EV charger deployment. One circuit, simple setup, and you're good to go. You can, of course, take things a stage further by integrating Easy with other on-site power infrastructure. That allows you to set charging limits based on whole site power consumption or even the availability of renewables. Devices such as the Equalizer, along with various cloud-based platforms, make this possible. What's really impressive about the Easy Pro system is once you open up that app, you can manage each charge point at a granular level, setting things Things like the charging speed of individual chargers so you may have someone who's turned up with a nearly empty battery and you might want to give them priority over somebody who is nearly full you can set a temporary limit you can rename the charger you can even coordinate actually the color front that you've got on the charger but also help debug things that can happen like a schoolboy error i made expecting to get three phase charging well it only plugged in a single phase lead you can even take a reading off that mid meter from the comfort of your desk as well to check what's going on at a power level i will leave a link to the full easy pro system in the description and fire in any other comments that you have about the system and i might even tell you why there's a monster can stuck 
hook to the wall of the building. Of course, the one thing we haven't talked about in this is actually how we build people for using EV chargers. And as the rate of cars increases, that's something we might have to take very seriously. But that may take you into the realms of actually being a public charge point operator. And in the UK, that brings with it some onerous regulations, which again, you can deal with with the Easy Charge Pro system. You might want to find out about some of the other nuances about that in the video that's on screen now.